I'm Dr. Mark Attala, and I want to welcome you to our discussion on citing social media, so incorporating Twitter and Facebook into your APA-style paper, with the initial question, of course, of why am I using social media in my paper, and we'll talk about that. But first, please buy my books. I have three books on writing in APA 7th edition um, style, and so you can uh, check those out, maybe talk about them on social media. So let's start by talking about social media as a source. It's difficult to reference because unlike journal articles or websites or even YouTube videos, many times posts can't be accessed by everyone or somebody has to be a friend in order to see them. However, many public officials and celebrities have public accounts that can be accessed by anyone. And so uh, if you're citing the social media post of a friend, that's akin to what's called a personal communication. So let's talk about those first. So personal communications include things like interviews, emails, um, texts, telephone conversations, if anybody still has those, and private letters. Now, they're infrequently part of an academic paper, but you can include them, and I'll, I'll, there's a, one on the next slide that I've used before. Uh, you talk about the person you've had the communication with, and they should be listed by the first and middle initial um, and their full last name, along with the day, month, and year of the communication, if that information is available. So for an example, um, this is a personal communication I received um, in an email from Gordon Bell, who's pictured there to the right, in support of my sabbatical. Now, my sabbatical was on um, the quantified self movement, and you can see in the picture, it's about wearable technology. He's wearing a camera. I actually took pictures every 30 seconds of my life for three years. And so that's the research I was doing. Um, it's amazing what you find out about your life when you take pictures of your life every 30 seconds. But so you can see, um, this is a, a sentence that was um, a personal communication. Quantified self movements very much in its infancy. And so G Bell, uh, personal communication, August 25th, uh, 2015. So they're not included in your reference list. So you cite them, but you don't reference them. Oh, and I should say too, Gordon Bell, uh, he invented all the VAX computers that I did statistics on um, in the 1980s. And he's very big in the quantified self movement. I did not get the sabbatical in case you're wondering. Um, that is what higher education is all about. Politics. The, uh, the battles are so vicious because the stakes are so small, but it's fine. Let's talk about Twitter. Now, powerful and famous people have been known to tweet important information about those, their views, but, um, and they have public accounts, which means that anybody can access their tweets. But tweets about politics and culture don't age very well, especially in an academic paper. So let's stick to something friendly like Mother's Day. So this is what a reference would look like. Um, and this is from Barack Obama. And so um, there's his handle and then the, um, the date of the tweet. And then happy Mother's Day to every mom out there. And so it's the first 20 words of the tweet. That's what you um, put into the reference. And so he's not referring to his mother-in-law as Marion. Uh, he says, my mother-in-law, Marion Robinson, but that's cut off because it's after the first 20 um, words. Image attached, and that is the image that he attached of his family up there. And then you identify it as a tweet, also in brackets, and then provide the URL for it. If you wanna cite that tweet, they're cited like, tweets are cited like anything else, and you can put them in either a narrative or parenthetical citation. So as you can see, President Obama 2018 included his mother-in-law. Some politicians include their mother-in-law. There should be a, a dash between uh, mother-in-law, but perfection's only possible in art. Perhaps you've heard of the Facebook. Again, famous people and celebrities often have public accounts that anyone can access. And so here's the reference for a post from Barack Obama about the passing of baseball legend um, Hank Aaron or Henry Aaron. So uh, there's his name, the date, again, year first, and then the first 20 words. Hank Aaron was one of the best baseball players we've ever seen and one of the strongest people I've ever, it cuts off, 
he says met. The image that's attached um, is above, and in brackets you say that it's a status update, and then provide the URL. If you wanted to cite that, you, again, you'd cite it like anything else in a narrative or a parenthetical citation. Um, President Obama acknowledged the death of Henry Aaron. Some politicians acknowledged the death of Henry Aaron, so you can see how it's set up there. Instagram. Why might somebody use Instagram as a source? And that's a very good question. Some unique information, though, can be found on Instagram. So, for example, Philip Zimbardo, he infamously ran this Stanford prison experiment, and he occasionally posts archival material um, from the study on Instagram. Is that really Philip Zimbardo? I have no idea. Because um, people like Ivan Pavlov post information on Instagram, and he's been dead for decades. Um, I actually know the person who posts as Hugo Munsterberg, who's a famous IO psychologist. This is what the reference would look like, though. And so I think this is a significant thing that you might use in a paper. It's the original newspaper advertisement to recruit students to be part of the Stanford Prison Experiment. So Philip Zimbardo, and then his handle on um, uh, Instagram, the date of the, the post, who's up for it, which is, is what they, they put with the image, that they put a photograph in brackets, that it's on Instagram, and then what the URL is. If you wanted to do the citation, you can see what a narrative citation looks like, or a parenthetical citation. Now again, we don't know if that's actually Philip Zimbardo, but since that's the username, that's what we use in the citation and the reference. Other social media, what about LinkedIn or Tumblr or anything else? They're all cited in reference just like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram if the account is public and be, can be accessed by anybody. But what about everything else? What about text messages and WeChat and Snapchat and whatever somebody invents tomorrow that I haven't heard of? Well, they all fall under the classification of personal communications because not everybody can access it. So again, text messages are sent to you personally. And so therefore, they would be cited, but not referenced. Okay. Um, yeah, and you can put them in either a narrative or a parenthetical citation. Well, that's what I want to say about, about social media. But thank you, and good luck in your writing. And please visit us at APA Central, where there's plenty of videos and other materials to help you with your, your writing. And have a great day.